Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is me Duke C T and see this little thing here. Um this thing here is for my uh finger. It is a uh, little splint for um my swollen middle finger. I don't know why it's swollen and that was probably the, this this is the main reason why I have not been able to do my uh to put up my podcasts on uh on on on, 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 on YouTube and Blip and everything. That's why it's so late, and I apologize. And it is I am in hearing pain um, right now. It, it hurts right now. You know, you know everything else. It, this thing makes it more tolerable. But yeah, once I take it off, it's it it is a it, it makes it like go. Boom! The, the pain just comes right back, and uh, again, I apologize for you know delaying you know content for my channel and Blip channel and everything else. So I apologize. Um, I want to make this video because I wanted to uh, talk about TNA uh, lockdown, and not only lockdown. I don't. I mean, there's a part of lockdown that just pissed me off. Um, and the fact is. This part of lockdown really opened my eyes about something with the whole industry, you know, the entire mainstream wrestling, you know, TNA and WWE. And if any question was Abyss crawling out of the ring during Samoa Joe versus Magnus, which is actually a pretty good match, and then you had that stupid thing happen, and I just like, yeah, TNA just, I just, I just stopped. I couldn't care. I didn't care when MVP became leader of direct information. They had an opportunity to really have a new change with TNA. They had a chance. For a new champion, for new owner, new things. This could have been great. Instead, they had to do the same screwy damn finish. And I am disappointed because I was really liking TNA so far and and it just I don't know it it bothers me it bothers me that TNA has to do this type of stuff it bothers me not only TNA has to do this but WWE as well they have to do these stupid little work these, not, these stupid screwy finishes they don't know how to do a clean finish and the reason why they tend to do it is because they put these their stars, their heroes, their faces, what have you, in these situations where if they lose clean, they lose their heat. So the best thing you do is do a screen finish. And there's no problem with that. I mean, they've this been going around for the beginning of wrestling itself, but but the inf but it is continuous. It is continually to happen. The WWE and TNA they just don't know how to book a real classic heel and face, you know, a good guy, a good guy, villain type of media. They don't know how to do it. It seems like every time they come close to, they usually just have okay. We have to put a swerve in here. We have to have a dirty finish to, you know, to continue the story. Even if the story is completely horrible and makes me really question why I can still watching it. But by God, we have to save it for the big super event and everything else. WrestleMania, see WrestleMania, Slammiversary or Bound for Glory or whatever the main event. Hell, I would not be surprised that the Daniel Bryan thing could tease on to SummerSlam of next of, of this year so they can keep riding on and make it a full year and going full circle or something like that. God, I mean... Seriously, I, I, I'm i just, when I look at this stuff, and I'm really frustrated about this, is that they just can't do it. They just can't get that good moment, that, that moment is fleeting. I mean, I again, I understand it, but it, it frustrates me why companies, that they, they continually do this. They continually put these screwy finishes. They continually put... These like, oh, we have to do all this stuff. We got to do all these swerves. We got to do all this crazy stuff. But yet, when well, they can just actually just have a straight up wrestling, just straight up, you know, sure, you can have the villain triumphant, but then you can have, you have to have the good guys in the, at the end of the day win. You have to have the good guys 
actually succeed because if you don't well people are just going to I'm not going to watch there go but people haven't been uh, people have been leaving the WWE and well TNA they people are just like you know oh, I guarantee they pissed off with Joey at that hardcore fan base even more and especially the the paying gate seriously 9,000 people showed up it was just depressing and the crowd did well I mean there were some good matches at, at lockdown I'll get into it in my last review a standing review when I get to it hopefully in um, you know next in the next two weeks I will be doing that review if everything goes according to plan <sighs> man I have been really slacking off um, I am going to try to get back into the reviewing game so don't worry about this um, with that to my special review that's uh, for my 500 uh, YouTube subscribers after I finish that and by the way I got 512 so thank you all guys so much for keep pushing me up there even though um, I've been delaying this stuff for a while and everything guys you got you all of you guys are awesome um, every single one of you subscribers um, but back to my main point is I got to is burning up right now, but I don't care. I'm making this video. Um, my main point is that the WWE and TNA they just, they just can't. They just seem to be inadequate to make a not only a good story, but actually a good finish. I mean, they start off with something interesting. They start off with a, a premise of it, but more often than not, they can't get to a middle. The middle part, they screw up. And in the ending, even if they do it right, people are just like, I don't really care. So for example, the Punk, CM Punk losing a Triple H in a really pointless rush matchup and everything. And CM Punk having a very point, I mean, CM Punk really having a, at best, in a Continental Championship reign with the WWE title with him not even main eventing a show until, what, no, uh, Night of Champions of that year, I mean, seriously, I, I just don't get that. I just being a placeholder for The Rock with his bland and boring matches. <sighs> but hey, it gets the money, I guess. It gets the WWE that nostalgia boner and everything else, and people love it. But hey, that, that if it makes the money and it brings some success, by all means, keep going at it, WWE. Keep doing it, TNA. You know, keep making these stories. That are completely they're good in the beginning, but at the end, but by the least at the half mean before they even get to halfway point, they're completely foobard, and you ruin your big star, your big moment. That's nice, you know. Hey, you know that that if that's what they want to do. Then that's that's their prerogative. Personally, I would like to have a story that's a good mi beginning, good middle, good end. You know, at least I have something. I mean, the only good thing I remember about the entire Authority stuff was the Cody Rhodes stuff. The Cody Rhodes storyline was actually brilliant. I loved it because it was very simple. It was very easy to connect with the Authority actually having a good heel. They actually acted like villains instead of the super smart marking and everything else. They actually acted like villains. They set up the problem with Cody Rhodes and uh, Dustin. They got their jobs and everything else. It was good. It was simple. It was a very easy and simple booking back and forth type of stuff. You know, that sort of thing. I like that. And I really think they should have done this with Daniel Bryan. But I don't know. It bothers. Like I said, it really bothers me. But the WWE, they are capable of doing stuff like this. Same with TNA. They are capable of doing good storylines. But in the end, they continually screw everything up. That's it for me, Duke CT. Um, peace and love. Uh, peace and love. I'll see you when I see you. Hopefully, you know, my finger won't, won't be that bandaged up. Um, I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Later.